How's it going everyone? It's Adam from Life of Adam. Today I'm back with a brand new video for you guys. Today's video I'm going to be talking about common questions that you're going to face on the lifeguarding final written test. Now I've made videos about this in the past about how to study and some general tips about like how many multiple choice questions there are, like how to pass on your first try, stuff like that. But I haven't really talked about specific questions that you're going to face. So today I'm going to give you some answers and to help you guys pass and basically what to think about and some trick questions you might face. So, so yeah, let's hop right into it. Now the first group of questions that you might face have to do with specific emergencies. For example, cardiac arrest, shock, uh, someone's like overheating, exhaustion, dehydration, like hypothermia, like freezing, like all these different types of things. And basically it's really important to know which symptoms are associated to which one. So, so for shock, it's gonna be warm and dry skin. Uh, these are all multiple choice, by the way. So there's gonna be like option C, option B, warm and dry skin. That's probably gonna be the answer. And for like cardiac arrest, it's gonna be like maybe a check all that apply or like an all of the above type answer. It's gonna be like unresponsiveness, no pulse, sudden collapse. One of the major terms that you have to know the definition for and you have to know what it means is the word negligence. You are 100% going to get a question about it. They'll give you a scenario like a lifeguard wasn't paying attention. Maybe they're talking to a friend on their phone, reading a book, doesn't matter. And someone in the water like drowns and they weren't paying attention. Now this isn't abandonment. This isn't uh, some other words I'll try to trick you with like consent or like refusal of care. The right answer is this is an example of negligence. So make sure you know the definition of that and you know how to apply it because that's a very important one and I'll definitely be asked on your exam. Now another question is going to be about things to consider when entering the pool to save someone. There'll be a long list of like stuff like location of the victim, location of you, like where you're stationed, location of people around you, uh, the condition of the victim, They'll try to trick you with like the size of the victim, like how big this victim is, that's not the right answer. Or like how, like the temperature of the water, that's not the right answer. I'm sorry, if you're working at a freezing pool, you're gonna have to jump in and save the person. It's not gonna be about like doing a toe dip and making sure the water is like cool to go in. Um, so they're gonna try and trick you with stuff like that, but basically it's like a check all that apply type question or all the above type question. So just make sure you have all the basics, uh, location of the victim, the equipment you have to use, there might be another one like facility design or like the structure of the pool, stuff like that. So that's a question you're probably gonna face and it's a very important one. Now really quickly, if you're taking the lifeguarding course to become a pool lifeguard like me back in the day when I did it, uh, even though you're like focused on a pool, you might get asked a question about waterfronts. Now one of the more common ones is like, what's a common challenge that you might face at a waterfront that you won't necessarily face at a pool? And there are gonna be options like, a lot more people because beaches are a lot bigger, meaning a lot more people, a lot more distractions. Uh, maybe the sun is like warm, it's like a hotter outside and the sun's beaming down more so people get more dehydrated, stuff like that. So the right answer is gonna be something to do with the water condition. It's gonna be like murky water or like tides or waves, stuff like that. So if there's an option that says murky water, that's definitely the right answer and you can move on to the next question. Now another very important question, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the early questions you might get asked. It's about the primary responsibilities as a lifeguard. And when you see the word primary, you gotta remember, okay, this is the most important thing. So you might get, you might get options that are like, oh, like in, encourage safety like instruction or like teach lessons or schedule swim hours, like all these different things that lifeguards do and it's part of the like job description, but it isn't the most important thing. So the most important thing, the right answer is going to be preventing drowning and injuries. That's always gonna be the primary responsibility of a lifeguard. That's a pretty easy question, especially if you recognize the meaning of primary. Now, another question is about you guarding for a long time and let's say it, the conditions are brutal, let's say it's like 100 degrees, you ran out of water, like what do you do? Uh, the right answer is always going to be jumping in the pool and like guarding in the water. It's never gonna be leaving the station and cooling off inside because you have a responsibility and obligation to watch the pool, you can't leave it unattended. So if you get a question about like that, it's perfectly okay to guard in the water. I know some facilities might not like that, but for the Red Cross exam, other lifeguarding exams, if you get asked a question like that, guarding in the water is always gonna be the best answer in comparison to going inside and cooling off. Another question you might face is gonna be like, as a lifeguard, you are responsible for blank, and there'll be a bunch of options. And it's not the same thing as the primary responsibility question. It's now about just responsible in general. So in a question like this, you are looking for something to do with rules, enforcing rules, consistently enforcing rules. That's always gonna be the right answer. They might have other things in there that are kind of, they sound right, but you're unsure about. 
consistently enforcing rules is always going to be the best answer in a situation like that. That's like one of the main responsibilities. It's different from the primary responsibility question because we're just talking about they're responsible in general, meaning not all of them are gonna be correct. Some of them might sound right, but aren't actually true. So enforcing rules is always gonna be the right answer. Now, the last question I'm gonna talk about in this video uh, is about lifeguarding, like what you should be doing while watching the pool. And this one's pretty easy because you're gonna get a bunch of options like, oh, you should have your phone in your fanny pack or you should be eating while guarding to make sure you're fueled, stuff like that. The answers are gonna be all wrong except for scanning the pool and sitting upright with good posture. That's gonna be the right answer. Uh, these questions are all easy. It's like common sense. So if you get a question like this, it's a really good thing. Uh, the questions I said before are a little bit more tricky, but just to help you guys out, having good posture and scanning the pool is the right answer. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Definitely like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and comment down below if you want a part two of this or I can give you guys some more common questions that you might face and the answers to those questions. So I'll see you all in the next lifeguarding video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.